Okay, forgot to film an intro. Um, <laughs> so editing, Sam. Hello, V. Hi, everyone else. Welcome to Gaping Chasm. Uh, today is my August reading vlog. I write so many books. So yeah, just gonna launch right into it. Enjoy. <laughs> Three things, new glasses, new chair, new bookcase. It's been a couple days into August. As someone else in my family was using the camera, so I didn't have access to it and I don't have like a tripod or anything for my phone. So I couldn't update the reading vlog that way, but a lot has happened. So on the very last day of July, I actually read a book because I'm crazy like that. And that book was The Silver Arrow by Lev Grossman. Because I read it on the last day of the month, it obviously didn't make it up in the, or make it into the uh, wrap up at, at the end of the last reading vlog. And I totally didn't even intend to pick it up. Uh, I listened to an audiobook version of it on the NetGalley app because now there are audiobooks on NetGalley, which I loved. F like, f first of all, Silver Arrow, fantastic, five stars. I will be talking about it like at the end in like the big wrap up I do. Basically it's a middle grade fantasy written by Lev Grossman who has also written the Magician's Trilogy. It's about Kate who for her birthday writes to her mysterious and rich uncle and asks him for a present and he brings her a steam engine and her and her brother end up going on an adventure on the steam engine and they were talking animals and just like really wonderful life lessons in there and yes fully support fully recommend it was phenomenal uh, but like I said totally unexpected did not think I'd be reading that book at all anytime soon which actually brings me to the next thing so I kept saying I was going to read Dark Dawn and I keep saying I'm going to read Dark Dawn I feel like I'm like oh yeah that'll be the next read and then I keep pushing it off well I've pushed it off again Here's, like this, it's actually tied into not having access to the camera. I want to do its own little reading vlog and because I didn't have access to the camera and I didn't want to wait to start reading a new book is why I picked up the Silver Arrow thinking it would take me a bit to read. It didn't, it took me a day. And then I was like, okay, what do I pick up next? And I decided to pick up Way of Kings. Um, I've actually read this book before. I, I recently bought it in hardcover because I own a little mass market paperback version, but I want to reread the books, catch up on the series. I haven't read book three, I've read the first two. Uh, for book four coming out later this year, I do not think I'm going to be caught up before the end of, or before like the book comes out, but I'll be like on my way to being caught up. It's a chunker, but I decided to pick up Stormlight Archive because why not? And then I'm going to read another Dresden Files book and then I'm going to read Dark Dawn. The reason I'm doing it like that is I don't want to sandwich two epic fantasies next to each other because I just feel like that's asking for them to compete and I don't want them to compete directly against each other or like to compete at all. They're two very different books. So <laughs> Way of Kings it is. This is the first in the Stormlight Archive series which is part of Brandon Sanderson's Cosmere universe which I love the Cosmere. I've read Elantris um, obviously I've read this before, I'm just rereading it. And I've read the Mistborn books except for the most recent two Wax and Wayne books. I haven't read those yet. I'm kind of waiting for book four to have a release date before I pick those up. Uh, but otherwise, I've read a lot of the Cosmere. I really love it. I've got a pretty decent grasp on it from what I've read and also reading supplementary stuff that is like put together through interviews and whatnot. Very cool. It's basically his shared universe of most of his books. Uh, but Way of Kings is... Uh, oof, I shouldn't have put it down. <laughs> this is the chunker. Oh, I just realized there's a sticker. No, we're not gonna peel that off. I'm not risking it. Okay, so um, <laughs> how to describe it? It's very big. There's a lot going on. I think I just have to read the flap. I don't think the flap does a good description, but I don't know how I would like succinctly describe this book or this series. Roshar is a world of stone and storms. Uncanny tempests of incredible power sweep across the rocky terrain so frequently that they have shaped ecology and civilization alike. Animals hide in shells, trees pull in branches, and grass retracts into the soilless ground. Cities are built only where the topography offers shelter. It has been centuries since the fall of the ten consecrated orders known as the Knights Radiant, but their shard blades and shard plate remain, mystical swords and suit of armor that transform ordinary men into near invincible warriors. Men trade kingdoms for shard blades. Wars are fought for them and won by them. One such war rages on the ruined landscape called the Shattered Plains. 
There, Kaladin, who traded his medical apprenticeship for a spear to protect his little brother, has been reduced to slavery. In a war that makes no sense, where ten armies fight separately against a single foe, he struggles to save his men and to fathom the leaders who consider them expendable. Bright Lord Dalinar Colin commands one of these armies. Like his brother, the late king, he is fascinated by an ancient text called the Way of Kings. Troubled by overpowering visions of ancient times in the night's radiant, he has begun to doubt his own sanity. Across the ocean, an untried young woman named Shallon seeks to train under the eminent scholar and notorious heretic Jasna Colin, Dalinar's niece. Though she generally loves learning, Shallon's motives are less than pure. As she plans a daring theft, her research for Jasna hints at secrets of the night radiant and the true cause of the war. That's a pretty decent descriptor. Uh, there's even more going on than that, but... Yeah, that, that's succinct. That's pretty succinct, actually, considering this is over a thousand pages long. So that's what I'm reading. I'm expecting that to take me two weeks. Like, I don't think it'll be a quick read. But the other thing that has happened that I really wish I could have recorded, um, like going up and maybe me organizing, is my new bookcase. All of my bookcases are now organized and they are stunning. And yes, I will show you. I might do a bookshelf tour. I'm gonna do a really tiny one now and here just to give you an idea, but I would love to do a more in-depth one sometime, but that'll definitely be its own video and it probably won't be until I get, I wanna get another bookcase over here. So it probably won't be until after that happens and that won't happen until at least October, October at the earliest. I'm not in a rush. I really like how my shelves look. I was joking around, told my brother, I was like, I kind of don't want to get any more books because the shelves are perfect right now. And he was like, yeah, that's not going to happen. I was like, I know, there's already some on their way to me. So bookshelf tour time. Okay, we're going to start with this one because it's the easiest one to film. Up top, we have a lot of my like trinkets that you saw on the shelves. Um, a lot of Mortal Instruments stuff, The Secret Book, Volume 3 is here, an Akami, a tin from a fairy loot, and then uh, this top shelf is mostly fan- well, it's all fantasy, I think. Uh, mostly YA fantasy, and then at the very end we got some adult. Sarah J. Mass shelf with my tour edition of Crescent City displayed. Proud. And then we've got pretty much almost all my- well, actually, here we go. All my Cassandra Clare books. The fairy loot chain of gold is displayed right now. I was debating which chain of gold to display. I think they're all gorgeous. Um, and then, you know, which land series, Bone Cryer's Moon, which I recently read. Down here we've got, I think it's all science fiction, except the two superhero books at the end. And then some more fantasy. Um, I love all these books, but I couldn't put them higher up, so it's kind of a shame. Um, I'd love to be able to display some of these. Well, I guess I, I haven't read the... Girl in the Stars, so I don't know how I feel about that one. I know how I feel about the author, and I don't like him. And then we've got my Rick Raritan slash middle grade books kind of on display here. That hasn't changed. Up top, we've got Dresden Files and some other mass market paperbacks. Starless Sea Waterstones Edition on display with this gorgeous shelf. There's Lumetier Chronicles. Strongly recommend. Voltron Funkos. Here we've got pretty much the Lee Bardugo shelf. At some point, this will probably become only Lee Bardugo books. Um, so she's got a lot of books coming out this year, mostly collector's editions, so I'm excited to expand that one. Similarly, here will is the Lainey Taylor shelf. Again, it will probably become solely Lainey Taylor at some point. And if you'll notice, the UK hardcover Muse of Nightmares that I was so excited about finally arrived. Uh, I would have shown an unboxing on here, but like I said, didn't have the camera. If you want to watch the unboxing, I did put it up on Instagram. Um, very, very excited that's here. Got some more trinkets and stuff. Some mass market paperbacks. Um, yeah, I don't have a lot of mass markets. Some more fantasy. I think it's all adult fantasy on the shelf. And then down here, we've got some more, um, I guess, adult fantasy and YA. Just like stuff that wouldn't fit elsewhere. Um, Magician series by Love Grossman, Neverwhere with Chris Rudell illustrations. I love those. It's going to get kind of dark in some of these spots. I don't have a lot of wiggle room. Sorry, these are not as great an angle, but here we've got my like Nevernight Chronicles collection. Red Rising, and this is pretty much a V.E. Schwab shelf, except we have Docile, um, and I would, I really want it to be able to display uh, Vicious, because this edition is really pretty, 
but didn't have room um, at some point she'll be getting a bigger shelf and docile I'd love to display as well then we've got down here carry on my three copies of Ra wayward son because I'm crazy and I'm planning to get at least two more copies so you know continue the crazy Raven Cycle, Maggie Steve Waters, Red, White, and Royal Billu, Song of Achilles. This is some just like, again, YA and fantasy that didn't quite fit anywhere else. There's Philip Pullman over there. He'll probably end up with his own shelf at some point. Here's some more adult stuff. Uh, Star Wars books, Night Circus. Oof. This shelf is hard to show. We have the archive, the Unbound, some Neil Gaiman in there. We've got some uh, Kazu Ishiguro, Hemingway, little thing keeping home up. And I'm gonna move up, bottom up. So this shelf is empty and these Funkos are going to be moving. I just haven't moved them yet. I put them there after I organized and haven't moved them. Uh, these two bottom shelves are kind of gonna continue to be a catch-all. Hopefully that'll be all the growing space I need until I get another bookcase, I think I'll be okay. So we have some sci-fi. I've got Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy, Foundation, D another copy of Dune, Jonathan Strange and Mr. Norrell, you know, Ancillary Justice, uh, Mistborn series, The Thief, some more YA. I love this shelf because I love being able to face out Sabriel, which is just a gorgeous cover. These are the, um, the Australian editions of the books, which are just gorgeous. And I'm excited for the new UK versions coming out. We've got The Witcher there. Some UK paperbacks. We've got, or UK size paperbacks, I guess. Um, the Expanse series that I've read so far. Or I haven't read Cibola Burn. I'm going to soon. Uh, Robin Hobb, Naomi Novik, Gilded One, super excited to get to, Graceling, Morganville. And then at top, we have Gentleman's Guide to Vice and Virtue faced out because it is a stunning cover. I really do love this cover. Um, and just, just more books. And up top here, we have uh, Vampire Academy and the Parasol Protectorate. And then these books are not super interesting. Well, that was mean of me to say. They are interesting. They're just like, I can't really maneuver correctly right now. But we got some other books. So yes. <laughs> <laughs> that is my bookcase. I hope you enjoyed this little slapdash tour. Um, I will be doing a proper bookcase tour at some point this year. So keep keep your eyes peeled for that. Okay, this is a super impromptu and not very flattering angle, but the June fairy loot arrived. Finally, I think it's June. This actually might be July could be totally wrong. It's a little beaten up, but um, they're very good at packing, so I'm not at all worried. Thought I'd do an unboxing, just for fun with these. So the theme is Brazilian Royals, and I haven't been spoiled for anything, I don't think. Oh, immediately. Candle. Ash Crown. liking that. It says black currant tea. Loving the candle. We got these brown ones today. Okay. Let's put these is out of the way. Is that kinky at them? I think it's a pillowcase. So it says through love all is possible. Oh this side doesn't say anything. This side says through love all is possible. It's Crescent City themed, so I'm totally into that. That's a big pillow. Ooh. Bookmark? Yeah, magnetic bookmarks! Oh, that's cute. Look at these guys. There's a sloth! I love sloths. Okay. This is woven in moonlight magnetic bookmarks. Very cool. I think that was a book they did, um earlier this year before I was subscribed so that's pretty cool the Queen's Rising card holder is what it says on the outside of the package oh it's a little wallet that's cute you wouldn't even know it's like bookish themed actually that's perfect because I need a little wallet <laughs> not gonna lie 
Ooh. It says, one should never save cake for later when it can be eaten now. It's a cake food tray. That's really cute. I will say it is printed crooked, but I don't think I care. It's kind of charming crooked. So, that's, oh, I really love the art. So two tarot cards. If you saw my last unboxing, I should, I got a thing in the last one that said last month's tarot cards were delayed, um, but I'm only seeing two tarot cards, so I don't know what's going on, but it's Lila and Kel, so that's fun. Love them. Oh, I see more. There we go. Oh, good. Okay, we got two more. <laughs> Look at them. Oh. Oh, okay. So I think this is, um, I can't think of his name, but the white London one. And, uh, Rhee. Rye? The prince. So. Yay! I do. I have four. Cool, 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 cool. I was a little worried. I didn't see them at first. Look at them. They're gorgeous. Oh my god. Okay. I live for their tarot cards, not gonna lie. So this is an art. An art. This is some art. Maybe of the characters from today's book. Let's find out. The book is... Well, the tarot cards are the most exciting part for me. Because if you can collect it, you know I love it. But the book's the second most exciting part. And I can already see stained edges. The fairy scrap. Or the scoop, whatever. Oh, that's the letter that'll probably give it away. Ooh, all right, shielded, stained, and gorgeous black edges, and signed, of course, has it got anything naked, it's a pretty nice naked cover, Oops. pretty nice, all right, so it says, the kingdom of Helendi is in trouble. It's losing the war at its borders, and rumors of the new deadlier threat have surfaced. Princess Genesara knows her skills on the battlefield would make her an asset and wants to help, but her father has other plans. Second-born heir to the throne, Jenna Lex, the firstborn, her older brother's magical ability, so the king promises her her hand in marriage to the prince of a neighboring Turia in exchange for resources Helendi needs. Jenna has no choice. She must leave behind everything she has ever known if she's to give her people a chance at peace. On the journey to reach her betrothed and her new home, the royal caravan is ambushed and Jenna realizes the rumors were wrong. The new threat is worse than everyone imagined. Now Jenna must decide if revealing a dangerous secret is worth the cost before it's too late for her and for the entire kingdom. Hmm. Very exciting. I think the original cupboard. The original cover is blue and I'm actually kind of digging the green more. I'm loving it. Okay. And then we have, I'm guessing these are the main characters. And the note, the letter, and bookmark, which is cute. I love that it's just got one of the royals on it. <laughs> All right. Um, let's just see the food tray, the card holder, which I, I love, the little wallet, Ash Princess candle. Oh, it's a cushion cover. That's just a fancy word for pillowcase, yeah? I think it is. Okay. I don't know how I would put it on a cushion. Oh, the art print is of Vasya and uh, Mor Morozo Morosko from Bear and the Nightingale. I love those books. Okay, cool, 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 cool. Love it. So yes, that's the unboxing. I will say, in general, I'm like so-so about Fairy Loot lately. They've been kind of like batting... Oh, I, I, I don't know anything about batting averages, so whatever I was going to say, just ignore it. But um, yeah, I've just been really so-so about them. That being said, I do still really like subscribing to them. I love getting the little goodies and stuff. So yeah, I, I, I did sign up for another six months with them. We'll see after these six months if I want to continue maintaining the subscription or not. But I decided after the first six months that yeah, it was worth it. So I'm loving it. I also, I love Hey babies, look at them, look at them, look at them. Finished my way of King Riri. <laughs> Appropriately as a storm is pretty, it's a pretty strong storm. It's violently tearing around right now. So, you know. Um, the first time I read this was like six years ago and 
I wasn't a huge fan then. I read it over a really long period of time. It took me a while because obviously it's a chunker and I was in high school. This time I read it over the course of like 10-ish days and that's definitely the way to read it is sit closer together if you can. I was reading like 100 pages a day and even then it felt like forever. Uh, towards the end it was a lot quicker read but um I liked it a lot better this time uh, partly because I read it so close together and partly I think because I just know more about the Cosmere now. To me the most interesting aspects of Stormlight Archive have to do with the wider Cosmere and not just like the like small things happening um and I just I missed a lot of it the first time because I wasn't as knowledgeable about the Cosmere. I do kind of I, I think the first time I read it I thought it felt like a really extended epilogue and I still do kind of feel that way just because it takes a while for any of the characters to meet at the end when some do meet that's when it feels like the story is about to actually begin. So yes I did really enjoy the reread I'm excited to go reread Words of Radiance um, I remember almost nothing from that book. I think I remember I remember a little bit of what happens with Shallon at the beginning. And I remember Ishonai, Ishane, however you say her name. I remember a little bit about her. Um, that's it though. My next read, I will do that before I forget. My next read is going to be American Gothic. No, I'm so dumb. Mexican Gothic. <laughs> Mexican Gothic by Sylvia Moreno Garcia, which a friend lent me and I'm really excited to read. Um, this is a lot shorter, so hopefully it'll be a lot quicker of a read. So the description. After receiving a frantic letter from her newlywed cousin, Neo, Noemi Tab Taboda heads to High Place, a distant house in the Mexican countryside, unsure what she will find. Noemi is an unlikely rescuer. She's a glamorous debutante, more suited to cocktail parties than amateur sleuthing, but she's also tough, smart, and not afraid. Not of her cousin's new English husband, a stranger who's both menacing and alluring. Not of his father, the ancient patriarch who seems fascinated by Noemi, and not even by the house itself, which begins to invade Noemi's dreams with visions of blood and doom. Noemi's only ally in this inhospitable place is the family's youngest son, but he too may be hiding something dark. For there are many secrets behind the walls of High Place, as Noemi discovers when she begins to unearth stories of violence and madness. Mesmerized by this terrifying yet seductive world, Noemi may soon find it impossible to save her cousin or even escape this enigmatic house. So, really excited. I've heard amazing things. My friend loved it. And yeah, I mean, what else is there to say? I'm excited to read it. And it's like 300 pages, so it should be a quick read. Hopefully I'll finish it by the end of the week. Fingers crossed. Uh, I'm at like a kind of professional setup because I just finished recording a different video. But I finished Mexican Gothic. It was amazing. Five, well, four and a half stars. Just because I wasn't super invested in um, a certain relationship. Uh, I don't want to spoil anything. But I was just like, eh, I don't see it. Um, but I loved this book. It was nothing at all like what I thought it would be. I will probably do a full review. Well, I'll definitely do a review on Instagram. I don't know if I'll do a full video review. We'll see at the end of the month how much I get read. But it was like dark and spooky and f funny enough. So you know how I was like, oh, I finished Thermalite Archive during a storm. Well, that storm knocked our power out for like three and a half hours, which is really uncommon for us. We normally, if we lose power, it's only for like a minute at a time. So we lost power for a while. And it was still storming outside and I was home alone and I was like, wow, the only thing I can do right now is read, which is not a bad predicament to be in. So I lit some candles and read like the first hundred pages by candlelight and then when the sun finally came out again, I read it by like the sunlight, but yeah, the perfect atmosphere for this book. And probably the reason I read it as fast as I did, I think it took like three days, technic, two days? Like 48 hours-ish, I want to say, but like over the course of three days because we started like the afternoon two days ago and then that day and then until the afternoon today. Does that make sense? I'm rambling. But yes, four and a half stars. It was fantastic. Apparently Hulu is looking to make it a mini series, so fingers crossed because as I was reading it I was like yeah this would be the perfect mini series and I cannot wait. I hope it turns out and I hope it turns out good. But now that I've finished Mexican Gothic Time to turn to another Dresden Files. This is book six. Yes. <laughs> book six, Deadbeat. Um, 
This is the right one, yeah. Oh, wait, no, maybe it's blood. Oh, shit. <laughs> Hold on. I might have grabbed the wrong one. It might be blood rights. Did I read that one? Oh, no. Hold on. It's blood rights. Okay. I'm supposed to be on blood rights. Okay. <laughs> this is book six. This is like six through like eight is like roughly where I just forget the order. Um, now they look like they're leaning. I'll fix them. Blood rights. I'm so glad I didn't start because <laughs> I probably won't even have noticed. So the description. <laughs> For Harry Dresden, Chicago's only professional wizard, there have been worse assignments than going undercover on the set of an adult film. Like fleeing a burning building full of enraged demon monkeys, for instance. Or going toe to leaf with a walking plant monster. Still, there's something more troubling than usual about his newest case. The film's producer believes he's the target of a sinister entropy curse, but it's the women around him who are dying in increasingly spectacular ways. Harry's doubly frustrated because he got involved with the bizarre mystery only as a favor to Thomas, his flirtatious, self-absorbed vampire acquaintance of dubious integrity. Okay, can we just, like, say what a bizarre way to just, like, it's accurate, but, it, like, who describes a character like that in the back of a book? Thomas has a personal stake in the case Harry can't quite figure out until his investigation leads him straight to Thomas's oversexed vampire family. <laughs> Harry's about to discover that Thomas's family tree has been hiding a shocking secret, a revelation that will change Harry's life forever. I've said before in past vlogs that Thomas is one of my favorite characters, and I loved him even before, like, the revelations in this book, but, um, I'm excited for that shocking revelation. I, when I talk about this book, or, like, when it happens, uh, maybe I'll, well, I'll put up a spoiler warning when I talk about it, just because... It really brings me joy, and I, yeah. This book is almost 500 pages long. Really tiny compared, like, tiny pages, though. So I'm thinking I'll be done by the end of the week, hopefully. Fingers crossed. And then it's not Dark Dawn yet because I'm still pushing that book forward. Uh, then it's an arc of Good Night Rebel Girls. I'll talk about it when I read it, I guess. <laughs> Okay, I powered through Blood Rites. I always forget the title of it, but I powered through Blood Rites, and it was so good. This, I, I was addicted to it. I, again, I, I don't know why I forget how much I've enjoyed these books, but this is finally the one where Mouse is in it. So now Mouse is in the stories, and I forgot how much I love Mouse. And Kincaid is in this one, and I love Kincaid, even though he's a pig, and a lot of Thomas stuff, because we get the, um, spoilers. Spoilers. This is the one where we find out that Thomas and Harry are half-brothers, which, one of my favorite reveals in the series. We also find out that Ebenezer is the Blackstaff, which is a big thing. And he who walks behind is in this one. So, like, so much going on. <laughs> this is also the book that my first read through the series. I wasn't a big fan of Murphy until I read this book, and it completely changed my thoughts on the character. And I loved her, but I love her from the get-go this time through because I knew I loved her. So, The next one I'll be reading is an arc of um, the upcoming Good Night stories for a rebel girls book oh i don't remember the specific type it is but i'm excited um it'll be a quick fun read and i'll put a review out for it before it comes out i don't know when in relation but before it comes out yeah so that's fun <laughs> i think that's it for updates all right so i finished uh good night stories for rebel girls volume three and <laughs> it was really good really quick I always get like kind of emotional when I read like stories of just like motivational women because you know but I was going to read Dark Dawn once again I am pushing it because that is the book that keeps getting shoved to the side <laughs> um, but I legitimately cannot stop thinking about the Dresden Files so Deadbeat is next this is I think the one with the dinosaur so <laughs> description 
Paranormal investigations are Harry Dresden's business and Chicago is his beat as he tries to bring law and order to the world of wizards and monsters that exist alongside everyday life. And though most inhabitants of the Windy City don't believe in magic, the Special Investigations Department of the Chicago PD knows better. Karen Murphy is the head of SI and Harry's good friend, so when a killer vampire threatens to destroy Murphy's reputation unless Harry does his bit her bidding, he has no choice. The vampire wants the word of Kemmler, whatever that is, and all the power that comes with it. Now Harry's in a race against time and six merciless necromancers to find the word before Chicago experiences a Halloween to wake the dead. So really excited to do this one. I don't remember how many books in the series I've read in the past. It was either through Proven Guilty or White Knight. I'm not 100% sure, but either way I am coming. Actually, it might have been through Small Favor. No way I stopped right before changes, whatever. If I did, shame on me. But I'm quickly coming up to the books that are gonna be new. So that's really exciting, and I kind of want to dedicate most of my time to reading these right now because, yeah, I'm just... Blood Rites got me, like, super, super invested again. I read that book in, like, two days, I think, so... <laughs> yes, Deadbeat. Very excited. And then, then I will read Dark Dawn, finally. So I have a Lumicray to unbox. And I thought I would do it in its totality because I have the time. This is the July box because it was delayed because um COVID things. So here we go. Should we open it together? <laughs> cool. <laughs> alright, alright, alright. I haven't been spoiled for anything. So excited. Okay. Let's do this first. Ooh, okay, wait. <laughs> I'm looking ahead. This was the thing that was delayed. This. Oh my goodness. Look at this. This is so cute. This is gorgeous. Oh my god, I have no idea what I'm going to use it for. No idea what I'm going to use it for, but I will definitely use it for something. Probably like to hold bookmarks, maybe? <gasps> Actually, that would be perfect. Okay, cool. That's gorgeous. We have a pair of sunglasses that say Rebel Scum on the side of them. That is fun. Oh, and it's got like a TIE fighter and an X-Wing. So, oh, these are actually really <laughs> nice quality sunglasses. Fortunately, I don't really wear sunglasses because glasses, but these are really cute. And I will definitely find someone to give those to. We have some character cards. Oh, okay. Character cards from the Ember and the Ashes series. So... I don't, I don't know this series too well, but I recognize the characters. So this is Elias, and also, look at the back of those, that's pretty cool. We have Elias, Helene, Leia, and Marcus. Very cool. Yeah, these are very cool. A bookmark for the Sweet Black Waves trilogy. Is that what the book is going to be then? This notebook. Oh my god, it's gorgeous. From um from the bone season. Oh, it's a sketchbook. I love that. I love that. We've got Paige and Warden and it says I'm assuming that's Warden, um, and Paige. I'm assuming oh god, it's been ages since I've read those books. But it says never allow yourself to believe you should be silent. Which I love. Very excited about this. Oh, I forgot that they've teamed up with Fable and Black for the pins. Oh my god, I'm super into it. So it says it says Queen Kills King, which I love, and let me... Look at that. And it says what the book is, and I can see the book too. I guess they're not doing the, like, cloth book bags anymore. But I will definitely be putting this on my, um, like, pin holder thingy. A couple more small things. So we have this pin with a bird on it. I would, you know, get it closer, but like even at this distance, it's what you see is what you have. And then 
this is really cute. It's like a keychain. And it says, Baron's Books and Bobbles. Really cute, really cute. Like, look at that. Look at that. That's really cute. I'm super into it. Alright, and then the book itself. I didn't have the little, like, uh, spoiler card or anything. Unless it's in the book. But it is Seven Devils by Elizabeth May and Laura Lamb. Is that one of the authors of the mark? No. Hmm. I don't know. Oh, look at those pages. We have a book plate. No spoiler card, though. That's kind of odd. <laughs> I kind of wish they had one too because I'm not sure what all the fandoms are. I'll see if someone else has like posted it in their story or something. The description. When loyalty to the Empire is programmed from birth, resistance is futile until now. After Eris faked her death, she thought she had left her old life as Princess Discordia, heir to the galaxy's most ruthless empire, behind. But joining the Noventine Resistance, an organization opposed to the Empire's voracious expansion, throws her right back into the fray. Resistance fighter pilot Klo has been given a mission, infiltrate an Empire spaceship ferrying deadly cargo to gain vital intelligence, a task made all the more difficult when she's forced to partner with an old enemy, Princess Discordia herself, Eris. They discover more than they bargained for on the ship, fugitives with first-hand knowledge of the Empire's inner workings. With this information, these women might just bring the Empire to its knees, but the clock is ticking. Eris's brother Damocles, new heir to the throne, plans to disrupt a peace summit with the only remaining free alien people, ensuring the Empire's total domination. Unless this band of unlikely rebels stops him, millions will die. Super into it. Super into it. I'm just loving these pages. Oh my god, they're gorgeous. I will have to find a spot for you to live. I don't think I'll be reading this anytime soon, just because I'm really not in a sci-fi mood right now, but I am excited to get to it. And I will have to look up the spoiler card because I'm curious. And normally they have like an author letter and everything, so I wonder if it just got... Who knows? But the pot is definitely the best part of this one. Okay, I... Where'd the book go? I finished Deadbeat. <laughs> it was so good. I... I'm obsessed with this series right now. Like, oh my god. I forgot how much Butters was in it. I forgot so much. Um, minor spoilers, so keep that in mind, but I forgot that Harry becomes a warden in this one. I forgot that he gets paid to be a warden. I forgot about Bob just doing a lot, actually, in this one. I I forgot that Thomas was in it so much. Like, oh my god, it was such a good book and it's such a treat, and I can't wait to read the next one, which is Proven Guilty, but it is finally happening. I've been saying it all month. I was saying it the month before this and the month before that, but it's time to read Dark Dawn. So I am doing its own little reading vlog where I'll be, you know, talking about it in like spoilery terms. And that'll be going up at some point after this goes up. So yeah, but I'm really excited to read it. It's the final book in the Nevernight Chronicles. It's a chunker, so it's probably gonna take me quite a while. It's like 500 pages. So I... I'm gonna guess like this time next week I'll be done with it. But yes, so there might not be much checking in in the meantime. Um, oh, also another thing that I'm not really gonna be putting on here, I might do like a little like small update to be like, oh look it arrived, but the uh, Lumicrate Darker Shade of Magic box is on its way. It's supposed to arrive Friday. Fingers crossed that happens. But I'm just gonna film a separate unboxing for that and post that separately from the regular reading vlog because I think it'll be fun. All right. <laughs> okay. I literally just finished filming, uh, or I just finished reading Dark Dawn, and I finished filming the reading vlog, so that'll be going up. That'll be going up if you want to see my in-depth thoughts on this book. Uh, not much to say in this because, yeah, I covered it extensively, but five stars. It was fantastic. One of the best endings I've, I've ever read for a trilogy. Like, just super satisfying on every level. But now that I'm finally done with the Nevernight Chronicles, which is weird, but now that I'm done with Dark Dawn, moving on to Proven Guilty. So this is book... Oh, God, I have to count now. Book nine? Oh, my God. Book eight. 
book eight in the Dresden Files and double checking to make sure it's the correct one. Yes. Super excited to dive back into Dresden Files. I have been obsessed with the series. The description for this, if you want to avoid even small spoilers for the series, like, I'll put the thingy up, but description reads, Harry has no friends on the White Council of Wizards who find him brash and undisciplined, and they may have a point. However, now vampire wars have thinned out the wizards a little. A little? More than a little. They need him, so before he can blink, he's assigned to investigate rumors of black magic. Harry's other problem is an old friend's daughter, all grown up and in trouble already. Molly. Her boyfriend insists he's innocent of something that resembles a crime out of a horror film. The first impression turns out to be, well, pretty accurate, as Harry discovers malevolent entities feeding on fear. Olandais work for a wizard, his dog, and a talking skull named, Bo named Bob. I'm excited to go back. And yes, no longer the mass market paperback editions. I am now in the UK paperbacks, which I ended up, I bought these at like half price books years ago. I have books seven through 12 through 12. So I have through Ghost Story in these editions and then it's hardcover from there out. So it's a weird little collection I have, but I kind of like it because the books get taller. <laughs> so this book is not super, super long. It's less than 500 pages, so I will probably finish it, I mean, this week. The rate I've been doing Dresden Files is like 200 a day because I'm just obsessed with them. Super, super excited to get back into this one now that Molly is going to start being a major player in the series. I love Molly, so. And we're quickly coming up on, I think this was either the last one I read, so this might be my last year read, or White Knight is one of the two. We're right around there, so that's kind of exciting gotta get a read new stuff soon. <laughs> okay, as I'm doing this, I'm realizing how weird the lighting is. So it's almost the end of the month, and more importantly, it's almost the end of summer. So I thought I would do a sort of wrap-up reflection on my summer TBR that I set out in the May reading vlog. Yeah, wow, <laughs> all those months ago. And, um, you know, do a little reflection on that, and then talk about the books that I want to read in August. So the, I didn't grab it, but um, let me grab that. <laughs> the only book I said I wanted to read in summer and didn't get to was Star Sight, which I was excited to read at the time, but I've sort of just like, the further I get from Skyward, no, I still love that book. I don't want to like say I don't like it anymore, but the further I get from Skyward, the anticipation for reading the sequel kind of wanes. So this is going onto the back burner. I know I will love it when I read it, but I'm just not feeling urgently like I need to read it. I'm also not in a big sci-fi mood, so yeah, but I think that's great. Normally I am not good at sticking to a TBR even as loose as this one was. Because it is not the end of the month, I haven't, you know, finished reading all the books this month, but I'm going to mention the one I'm reading, which is Proven Guilty. This, I'm assuming I'll finish it by the end of the month. If I don't, it's officially going on my August TBR. And then I think I'm gonna finish it and have time to read Story Magic, which is an arc I have. So Story Magic by Laurel Gale. This is about 220 pages or something. I think this will be a really quick middle grade read. I'm excited to get it. It's an arc, so I definitely wanna read it before it comes out. And I think it comes out in September or October. So yeah, definitely gonna be reading it either by the end of this month, <laughs> either by the end of this month or early next month. So the books on my, August on my autumn TBR proper. This is in no particular order and I'm not really going to be talking too much about them but yeah there's also I feel like fewer books on this TBR in large part because they're over the summer I kind of had an idea of series that I wanted to finish like the Nevernight Chronicles or Strange to Dreamer series and I've finished those so while they're still like open series on my shelves they're just not recently opened um, and I'm doing a lot of rereading. I'm enjoying the rereading but yes um, arcs. Hopefully I'll be approved for more arcs. I haven't requested any in a while. I actually want to catch up and read all the ones that I have been approved for and review those before I start requesting. So the last one, assuming I finish Story Magic by the end of this month, the only one left is The Conductors by Nicole Glover, which looks amazing. I was so excited when I got approved for this one, and it is super high on my list of to be read. So that'll probably be done early autumn. I just, it looks spooky, it looks good. Yeah, I am so excited. Unsurprising, I will also be continuing my Dresden Files reread. I am going through these books so quickly. 
chances are, and I don't want to jinx it, but chances are I'll probably catch up over autumn and read the new releases. So that is something to look forward to. Um, I did figure out, I finally figured out, White Knight is the last book that I have actually read. So after this, the rest are all new to me and that leaves, actually I've read more than I haven't read, right? Yeah. I've read, I, so I, this will be the last book I reread, um, and I, I, most of these have been rereads, but, uh, <laughs> or most of the series is rereads for me, but it has been a wonderful reread experience, and I'm just, I'm loving rereading this series. I didn't expect to enjoy myself this month, mu this much, and I feel like every time there's going to be a lead up for a new Dresden Files book, I'll probably find myself rereading the books just because of how enjoyable it has been. Like, it's a long series, but it's worth it a hundred percent also continuing rereading to catch up on series words of radiance by brandon sanderson book two in the stormlight archives i had previously read um way of kings and words of radiance back when words of radiance had just been released in like mass market paperback was when i picked these up i remember almost nothing from this book though to be honest <laughs> for whatever reason this one is like out of my memory way of kings was too but like this one is even further away from my memory, and I'm not really sure why. <laughs> but I will be rereading this hopefully next month, because I want to read, and then I want to read Oathbringer. So I guess that's on the TBR as well. I want to read Oathbringer and catch up, and then read Rhythm of War. So <laughs> we'll see if I can manage that. But that's it for like physical TBR. Ooh, <laughs> I didn't, I, like I said, they're all like rereads because I don't know. I've just, I've been in a big rereading mood this year, and it's been awesome. Uh, so I wanted to also mention a couple pre-orders that I have on the way for autumn that I'm hoping to read in autumn. This is, this is where it might end up biting me in the butt when I go back to check my autumn TBR. <laughs> so The Lost Book of the White comes next week. I'm so excited. I am stoked for this read. I loved Red Scrolls of Magic. I reread that recently, if you remember whatever reading vlog that was in, and... Yeah, I'm I'm ready for White Scrolls. White, but the Lost Book of the <laughs> What's it called? The Lost Book of the White. I'm really excited for it. Can't wait to return to Magnus and Alex's story. Like, it's gonna be awesome, I think. And then The Other Side of the Sky by Amy Coffin, Kaufman and Megan Spooner. I have not actually read their other series. Oh, actually, that's a lie. I read Unearthed. Is that the first book in one of their series? I read that one, and it was okay. But The Other Side of the Sky just sounds really good. I think it's been compared to like Miyazaki films. So yeah, it's sold right there. You don't need to say anything else. <laughs> a book I don't have pre-ordered yet, but hope to purchase. Uh, maybe not as a pre-order, but this month is Piranesi by Susanna Clark. I loved Jonathan Strange and Mr. Norrell. I kind of wanted to reread it before Piranesi just because I love that book, but it's not gonna happen. Uh, but so hopefully I'll be rereading that this year or next year because I really do love that that book. It's one of my favorite fantasy novels of all time. So I'm really excited that Susanna Clark is publishing another book, even if it's not Jonathan Strange and Mr. Norrell related. I am, I'm stoked. It's going to be, I think, a great read. I've seen people, early reviews compared it to, if you liked Starless Sea, you'll probably like Piranesi, so I'll probably like Piranesi. And of course, the last two books on this TBR are highly 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 anticipated by me and I have multiple copies pre-ordered because I'm like that so actually I didn't mention it but Lost Book of the White I have multiple copies pre-ordered as well I think I have three I have the American hardcover with the reversible jacket because yes I don't like the new covers I liked the old covers a lot it's a thing goodness they're doing that um and then I also did a Luma Crates hardcover UK release with the new cover of both uh Red Scrolls of Magic and Lost Book of the White so that is exciting as well as the Waterstones Rune edition of it <laughs> I love collecting books okay <laughs> to be fair I did read uh, Red Scrolls of Magic twice and I have two copies of it so I mean I don't need to justify myself um <laughs> But A Deadly Education by Naomi Novik is another book I am so excited for. I pre-ordered the exclusive All Owl Crate edition, which I wasn't going to do, but then I decided, yeah, I do want to do it. And I'm really excited for that one. 
and it's also coming in one of the Lumicrates boxes. So I don't actually have another edition of it pre-ordered or anything. I might at some point get a regular edition just because, but it's so low on my priority list, I'm not gonna lie. I'm so excited for this one. I loved Uprooted and Spinning Silver, and I do really, I've wanted to read Temeraire for a long time, but I haven't. I do have the first one on my shelf, but Deadly Education sounds like a book that was kind of written for me, if I'm being honest. And last but not least, the final book on my Autumn TBR is a book that I have so many copies of pre-ordered that I better freaking like this book. And <laughs> I think I will. I really think I will. But if I don't, well, I'm in trouble. And that book is The Invisible Life of Addie LaRue by V.E. Schwab. I cannot even contain myself when I think about this book. I'm so excited. Like I said, I have a million copies pre-ordered at this point. I have two that I pre-ordered for the US virtual tour, and I will probably only keep one of those. I'll probably end up giving the other one away, either as a gift or like through a giveaway on Instagram. I'm excited. I also have the Forbidden Planet exclusive edition from the UK, the Waterstones exclusive edition, the Owl Crate exclusive edition, and a Luma Crate announced just yesterday that they are putting out their own exclusive edition but through their subscription, so I don't have to pay extra for that one, it's just part of my charge. Ooh, so many copies. <laughs> so yes, that is my Autumn TBR, and it's, I want to say it's like a little ambitious, but it's really not. Those are pretty much the books I'm going to be reading this autumn. If anything else sneaks in, I don't know what it could be. I have had a hankering lately to reread the Akatar series in large part because I want my mom to read them. She's almost done with Crescent City and I'm pretty sure she was up really late last night reading. And I think she'll also really like Akatar and that series. And also with the new book coming out, I just, I, I really have a hankering for those books again, but I don't think I'm gonna get to them anytime soon. I, if, if they sneak in, they sneak in, but I, I don't see it happening. I also do kind of want to reread Truth Witch and Wind Witch and then finally read Blood Witch, but again, that probably won't happen until the winter, but we'll see. I've been reading so much lately and it's been wonderful. <laughs> All right, this is probably the final update for the month because we're winding to a close. But I finished Proven Guilty. I loved it. i really frustrated because there are a lot of loose threads, but uh, I have theories about those. I forgot about like them being loose threads, but um, like slightly spoilery, but I mean not not knowing a hundred percent what happens later in the books, but I know that there's gonna be time travel at some point, like far, not even published yet, but at some point. I think Harry is the one who hit himself with the car. That's what I'm gonna say. Um, <laughs> I don't know why, but I think so. So I also wanted to mention that Instagram introduced their new Reels thing, which is basically TikTok on Instagram. And at first I was like, this is lame, but actually I've been having a lot of fun with it. So t <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm putting together some Reels and I'm trying to match clothing with books and I'm not knowledgeable about fashion or matching at all. So like, this is, what I've got going right now. So I'm gonna have some fun filming those. But yeah, this is probably my last update for the month. Um, I am gonna read Story Magic next, which is an arc, and I might finish it this month, I might not. I still have a couple days left in the month, so I'm not counting it out. Yeah, <laughs> I guess you'll find out next month when I finish that. I don't know if the microphone on the camera will pick it up, but it just started raining, and it's a really nice summer storm. So we're gonna make this a really quick outro, because I want to go open a window and sit by the rain. <laughs> Alright, so it is basically the end of the month. Uh, as is the case, I am filming this a couple days before the proper end of the month, and this is my wrap-up, but it is possible that I will finish another book. If I do, that book will be Story Magic. And it's like 250 pages. It's a middle grade arc that I received. I'll put the picture on the screen and everything. Uh, yeah, I think it'll be a quick read, but you know, I, I also may not. Who knows? Who knows? <laughs> The books that I for sure did finish. There were only two new reads, so everything else was a reread, but total. Oh no, that's not true, because I wasn't counting the arcs. Hold on, I think I read one arc. Yes, okay, so three of the reads were new to me, the rest were all rereads. 
And actually, I read seven books this month, which is pretty good, especially considering the size of some of these reads. Some of these reads. I'm really happy with my reading habits. I don't know if I mentioned it on the vlog, I don't remember, but I sort of changed my daily schedule. I start the day by reading about 100 pages. I have sort of amended that as the days go. If there's a day where I need to get a lot done in the morning, I'll read for an hour, do the things I have to do, and then finish up those 100 pages. But making sure to set aside time for 100 pages every day has been so nice. It has recharged me creatively and mentally and emotionally even. It has given me a really great start to the day and a great ritual, something to look forward to every time I wake up because I do have trouble waking up because of insomnia and such. And yeah, it's been such a positive change in my life. I know that it's not something I'll probably always be able to keep up, especially, you know, when I have a job again, but for now, I am going to treasure this opportunity that I have been given. It's one of the silver linings of quarantine, I guess. But the books that I actually finished, the arc that I read was Goodnight Stories for Rebel Girls. This is the third volume in the series. And the full title, the full title is Goodnight Stories for Rebel Girls, 100 Immigrant Women, 100 Immigrant Women Who Changed the World. I didn't speak too much about it in the vlog because it will be getting its own video review going up onto IGTV before it arrives on YouTube, but it will come to YouTube as well. So keep an eye out for that. It's hard to rate this book because it's like nonfiction and really short form content, but all in all, I really enjoyed it. I thought it was great. It was actually my first time reading a Goodnight Stories for Rebel Girls book, so yeah, I can I can say this one for sure is worth buying if you know if you're looking for it. I don't think I'm gonna buy it for myself anytime soon, but it's definitely a book that I'll probably be gifting quite a bit come the holiday season. The other two new reads for me were Mexican Gothic by Silvia Moreno Garcia and Dark Dawn by Jay Kristoff. So Dark Dawn again didn't speak too much about because there is a reading vlog specifically for Dark Dawn that you will be seeing coming out I think before um before the end of the month is my goal. We'll talk about YouTube goals in a minute. But yes, really liked it. I thought the ending was pitch perfect to the series and honestly cannot wait for his next book, Empire of the Vampire, or his next adult book, Empire of the Vampire. His Deviate series I have no interest in, but it's going to be very bloody vampires and I cannot wait. And as for Mexican Gothic, I really enjoyed this one as well. Shout out to Hallie, thank you for lending me your copy. I don't think I would have picked it up nearly as quickly if you hadn't sent it over. I adored it. I thought it was amazing. I don't really read books like this too often, so it was definitely out of the norm for me, but yeah, I definitely recommend this one. And also, I'm a wimp. I'm not good with like scary or horror stories, but this is... I'm not even good with like psychological thriller, okay? But this is more creepy and atmospheric than anything else. It's very much a haunted house tale without any jump scares or anything. So... Yes, definitely recommend this even if you're a little like worried about being scared. It it it's like a bone it's like unnerving and creepy and atmospheric, but not gonna give you nightmares, you know? Which also it's almost spooky season. This is the perfect read. I funny story, I think I mentioned it in the vlog, but I'm not hundred percent sure. But our power went out the same day I started reading this, so I started reading it in a how in the dark house with just candles and a storm raging, and it was a great way to start this book. I read like half of it that way. Rereads <laughs> So I say they're rereads, but it's been years since I read them the first time. So in some ways it felt like reading them for the first time. Like I remembered the broad strokes of the story, but little details I had completely forgotten. And I think that's the best time to return to a book. So the first of these is Way of Kings. My plan is to try to catch up on the series before the Rhythm of War comes out. I have previously read Way of Kings and Words of Radiance. Words of Radiance is on my TBR, which you probably saw. Um, but yeah, Way of Kings, great to return to. I think it is more entertaining and engaging as a reader now that I know a lot more about the Cosmere than it was the first time I read it, because the first time I read it, I thought it was a really slow book and felt like an extended prologue. It still feels like that, but knowing what I know about the Cosmere and Hoyd and what a lot of the stuff is like talking about without having it explained to me yet, like, I felt like it was a more interesting book because of the secrets of the Cosmere that it was unlocking. And I forgot how much I loved Kaladin. What a great character he is. And you knew this was coming. Dresden Files! I got three books done this month. It felt like I read more this month of the Dresden Files, but no, it just took up that much mind space. So I finished Blood Rites. 
<laughs> they're flying. I finished Blood Rights, Deadbeat, and Proven Guilty. Literally just finished this this morning. And if I think I mentioned it, but if I didn't, these are the UK har are the UK paperback editions is what my next several editions are in. I found pretty much all of these books used, which is pretty cool. I bought them used. Saved a lot of money considering how many books there are in the series. But so I loved Blood Rights. So much happened in these books. It feels really it feels like I read more, but I just they these are just three really, really big plot development books, particularly Blood Rights and Deadbeat. Um, because of all the Thomas stuff going on. I will say that I think if I, like, so far in the reread, Deadbeat has been my favorite. I really love Grave Peril, and I enjoyed, and I enjoyed Death Masks and Blood Rites a lot more than I remembered, like, or I shouldn't say that. I enjoyed Death Masks and Blood Rite a lot as well, but Deadbeat is by and far probably the best one, uh, of the series at like so far up to book seven huh. up through book eight my god <laughs> i'm really bad at remembering how many there are i will continue my reread there is no way i'm going to catch up before battleground comes out but i will be avoiding all spoilers for that and i will probably read peace talks and battleground back to back and do some sort of reading vlog similar to how i did dark dawn so yes that was my wrap up for the month of books i've read i'm really proud of the amount of reading i did and I enjoyed all the books I read, no disappointments this month. I hope that the next month treats me the same and I will continue with my Dresden Files reread, which yes, thoroughly obsessed with it. I also like to take now to do a like plan for a YouTube channel. It's been a while since anything's been uploaded from me and yeah, I was just getting overwhelmed with stuff. I know I said like last wrap up that it's been a while. Um, when this goes up, hopefully there will be other videos posted before this because the this one takes me a little longer to edit and the others are in nearly final stages but I was just getting overwhelmed with the schedule I had put myself on for putting these out even though I really enjoy making videos and stuff so I decided to just kind of call this month or this month of August a wash and decided not to put my effort into putting posting anything this month so that I could get ahead and successfully I am getting ahead. So when I tell you these are the videos coming from my end, I mean it. <laughs> so hopefully it'll be up before this video, but in case it's not, V and I did a Q&A together and that will be posting very soon. It was a lot of fun to do. <laughs> we ran into a couple roadblocks that were my fault, 100%, but it was all in good fun. So yes, that'll be up very soon if it is not up already. The next part of my Code Lyoko series that I've been doing is complete. It is ready to go up. It is actually scheduled on YouTube and waiting. You can check that out next week at the same time on this channel. So uh, Friday at 10 a.m. Uh, Central Standard Time that we'll be posting. And I'm really excited. This was, this is the beginning of season two and season two is fantastic. I've also got that Dark Dawn vlog that I have mentioned that is either coming out the last week of this month or the first week of October. Um, so you can definitely look forward to that. That is a lot of fun. That book was a experience. And beyond that, I've got another bookish video that we'll be posting later this month. It is all filmed. It just needs to be edited and prepped and everything, as well as a video about a movie I watched, which is basically like Mormon propaganda. Um, <laughs> That makes it sound more extreme, but it is. It's Mormon propaganda. And that film will be coming out, or that film, that video on that film will hopefully be coming out by the end of the month, uh, although much later. And I have a couple other videos, like, in the works, but nothing, you know, as concretely as those. So, yes, that's, that's kind of where the channel is headed <laughs> this month. So I hope you enjoy those. And, yeah, of course, I'll continue with the monthly vlogs. Um, oh! want to mention on my IGTV I will I, I'm posting reviews there before they arrive to YouTube just because Instagram is kind of my hub for bookish stuff I'm also posting my A Darker Shade of Magic unboxing to IGTV I considered putting it up on YouTube and I know I talked about maybe doing that in this video in the vlog earlier but I decided that it is really short and I want to just put it straight to IGTV and that'll be the long and short of it so if you're curious in that definitely go check out my Instagram, that video will definitely be up by the time this is posted on YouTube. So yeah, thank you for sticking around with this reading vlog. Didn't get out as much this month, so there's definitely a lot less B-roll to edit in. But I liked how the B-roll worked, so I'll continue doing that. Alright, 
Thank you for watching. Don't forget to subscribe if you're interested in seeing more of the videos that I mentioned today, or if you don't want to see me, but you want to see V, who is equally awesome and also has some great content. All right. Goodbye, V. Goodbye, everyone else. Thank you for watching. I'm going to go have lunch. And if you're curious, I'm probably going to have soup today.